Welcome to the part 2 of the Christmas seal tutorial. In part 1 we saw how to draw this box with the pen tablet using the basic features of Christmas seal, so if you haven't seen this part, you can find the link in the description. Let's start with a 2D animation now. We're going to animate the little floating drawings on the front so you know how to get there. Shift right click on the front of a little box, select the drawing if it's not selected yet and then switch to draw mode. The canvas rule is set to 3D cursor and oriented in front so everything's ok. Let's animate the line art from the front so press numpad 1 to switch to front view. So we saw before that if we move the time bar and start to draw in the same layer a new keyframe is automatically created and we already have an animation. But we can do this in a more clean way so let's select this keyframe and delete it by pressing X. Check that you're in the line art layer. Now go in this menu, Draw, Animation, Insert Blank Keyframe. Now you have an empty frame and you can start a new drawing here. And to help you draw this image, you have the onion skin system here in Christmas Hill, like in other 2D animation softwares. So to activate this here, go in the overlay dropdown. Of course the overlays must be activated and here, check the onion skin option. Of course, this option is only available because we are in a Christmas seal object and this activates the onion skin globally for the whole scene. So, after checking this option, you must go to the layers panel to activate it specifically for the layers you want. So, in the layers panel here, find the layer for the line art of this part of the drawing and on the layer name, click on the little circle at the left of the eye icon. That's the onion skin option for this layer. Now we can see on the viewport, the previous image of the animation appears in semi-transparent with a green tint. And if you have more keyframes, like here, let me erase the content in the middle so we can see better. Now you can see the previous image with a green tint and the next image with a purple tint. In the right panel, in the onion skin section, you can customize the colors of these images. And you can also change a lot of other options that I'll show you later. But the next tip that I will show you for now is in the overlay menu again. Here you can activate the fade layers option. This fade is all the layers you are not working on. As you can see on the viewport here, the difference between the lines I'm drawing now and the lines in the other layers. When you preview the animation, all the overlay and effects are disabled. And another tip here for navigation, you can use the left and right arrow keys to move by one frame to the left or right and the up and down arrow keys to jump to the next or previous keyframe. Let's make a loop for the whole animation now. For example, we'll try to make a 10 second animation for this video. So we can check in the output properties here. We have 24 FPS for the playback speed, so for 10 seconds we need 240 frames. At the bottom of the timeline here, we can change the end frame number. You can drag with the mouse or just type the number here, 240. I'm gonna remove my example keyframes now. For this box, I want a 1 second animation that will loop later on the whole 10 seconds, so I go to frame 24. And here, I select the first keyframe, I press Shift T and drag the copy to frame 24. So frame 1 and frame 24 contain the same drawing. Now I can make my loop between these two keyframes. So for the moment, we are using the traditional 2D animation techniques. We create keyframes, we draw inside, we create new keyframes in between and we draw the in-between images, etc. When you've drawn all your keyframes, if you think that maybe the animation is too fast or too slow, you can select the keyframes and press G to move them like an object. And you can also select all the keyframes and then put the time bar at one side of the selection and your mouse at the other side. And if you press S, you can resize proportionally the whole animation. Just beware, if you shrink it too much, some keyframes are going to erase the others. In my case, I will keep these to a 1 second animation. Now we've animated the line art for this part, so for the coloring process now, we are going to deactivate the onion skin and the layers fading option. Well, I'll just deactivate all the overlays with this button. That's because to 
color of its drawing, we just need to see the line art that is already animated as reference to paint inside. So now we've overlays deactivated, unlock the color layer below and place the time bar under each of the line art keyframes and paint inside. As you can see, I paint without adding blank keyframes because like with the pen, when you draw in an empty frame, it creates a keyframe automatically. Of course, it's better to hide the other layers to paint the correct shapes. And for the end of the loop, you can again select the first frame, press Shift D and drag to duplicate it at frame 24. Now we have our animation for these images. To make the loop now, we could select the images and press Shift D and duplicate multiple times, but it would be annoying and if we want to change one image later, we would have to change all the copies. So. The best way to do this, let me introduce the modifiers. When you edit any object in Blender, if you click this wrench icon, I think it's a wrench, you can find the modifiers available for this object. Depending on the type of object, the list of modifiers will change, so in this case we have the modifiers for crease pencil. And in this list we are going to pick the time offset modifier. Now, in this new modifier, the first parameters leave the mode to regular, offset to 1, frame scale to 1, and activate custom range. The start frame of our loop is 1 and the end frame is 24. For the rest, leave the keep loop option activated. And now, it works! If you check the animation, the frames from 1 to 24 are repeated on the whole animation. And if you modify one drawing, like here, the modification is repeated correctly in the loop. That's how we make a simple infinite loop. It's possible to make more complex loops by controlling the settings with external objects, but for now, just a very important thing that you must know is that when this modifier is activated, if you want to draw a new frame like here, for example, you won't see your lines because the loop is still on and it overrides all the animation. So when you want to modify your drawing, you must deactivate temporarily the modifier. And you can do this by turning off this screen icon near the modifier name. By the way, you can have multiple modifiers in one single object. So now this modifier is deactivated here. You can see on your drawing on the left. It's just deactivated in the viewport and not in the render here. So if you want to also remove it from the render, you must uncheck this little camera icon and now the modifier is completely deactivated. You can leave it like this in case you want to use it later and you can also remove it definitely with the cross icon on the right. And also another important thing to know, in some of the modes here, the modifiers won't work even if they are activated. So to be sure to see your drawing with the modifiers on before you render or preview your animation, go to draw mode or even better in object mode. Now we know how to animate with a pen tool, like for traditional 2D animation, and we are going to see how to animate with different tools and we are going to create our first automatic in between images. So back to perspective, let's change the canvas position. We need to go back to the surface of the box, so press Shift S, choose cursor to select it, and now the cursor is back at the origin of the current drawing. We're going to animate this face for example, so I unlock the corresponding layers for the line and colors, and I lock all the other ones. Now let's animate in sculpt mode here. If you move the time bar and start to sculpt your lines, you see a new frame appearing in the timeline. This works like the pen tool actually. As you see, this time I unlocked both line art and color layers so I can sculpt them in the same time. Let's suppose we want to make a loop with this face. The time modifier that we added before is active on the whole crease pencil object so I just duplicate the first frame with Shift D and drag to frame 24. Now, to create the in-between keyframes, we could go in the middle here and start to sculpt the transition image for this but Let's see a new tool for this. I undo this, and now while the time bar is still between these two keyframes, just go in the draw menu and select interpolate and sequence. And now, magic stuff, 
these blue frames just appear between the two white keyframes and they make a smooth transition between the two images. You can go in the color layer and do the same here and this is the result. It looks nice but maybe in some cases this will be too much, maybe too smooth or maybe too linear. So if you want to customize this animation and add maybe some acceleration or deceleration for example, you have to do this another way. Let's undo all these blue keyframes and let's switch to edit mode. Here we also have an interpolate tool but with more options. I don't know if this will be merged in the draw tool later. For now you have to go to the edit mode for these advanced options. And in the interpolation type here, you can select some curves for the animation. The default is a simple line, the linear mode, but if you take for example this one and press sequence, the preframes appear again, but they make your animation start slowly and then accelerate suddenly in the end. This was the shape of the curve that we saw in the menu. You can try all the other curves and you can also draw your own ones. Now there's another issue for me. There are too many frames. I want my animation to look more traditional with less frames so I could select manually some of the blue frames and delete them. But there's another way to do this. Of course, we are in Blender. For one problem, there are 10 solutions. So here another technique that I really like. Let's remove these blue keyframes and switch to draw mode. Actually, it's possible to do this in edit mode now, but never mind. Here in draw mode, place the time bar between two keyframes again, for example here. And I'm going to zoom on the lines to show you the effect better. If you select in the draw menu, interpolate and interpolate again, you see this orange outline over your drawing. And if you move the mouse to the left or the right, the outline image makes an interpolation between the previous and next frame. So try to find the position that you want to use. Just move the mouse and click to confirm. Now you have just one blue keyframe at the time that you've picked and with the shape that you've picked. So this is a semi-manual, semi-automatic in-between image. So now you can do this on other places in the timeline. You just have to be between two different keyframes and repeat the steps. Of course, these automatic interpolations work better if the previous and the next image are similar, like for example, same shapes with simple deformations. The tool won't work if you try to make a transition between a horse like this to a plane, for example. Bad idea. And who wants to turn a horse into a plane? Anyway, these blue keyframes are like the other ones. You can edit their content once they are created. And to keep your timeline clean, you can right click on some keyframes and change their types. In the menu, keyframe type, the blue one is actually called a breakdown. So here I can change this keyframe to breakdown type to make it look like the keyframe above. And same for this one. And these colors are not just to make the timeline look pretty. Here in the layers panel under onion skin in section, you can use the filter by type option to show only the keyframes you need for the onion skins. You can even configure it to show more than one frame before and after your current position here with these values. Another important tip, everything we did with the sculpt mode here is the same in edit mode. Let's see in edit mode for example. If you edit some lines at an empty frame, a new keyframe is created. Of course in this example we already have a keyframe here. And while we are in edit mode, let me show you another useful tool. I wanted to keep this for a more advanced tutorial, but to reward you for watching the whole video carefully, I'll show you now. When you move or rotate a group of points, your selection is like a hard selection. You can't make any smooth transition with the rest of your drawing. But if you activate the proportional editing in this icon here, and then move some points, you see the rest of the drawing start to deform proportionally with your modification. And if you scroll with the mouse wheel while you are in the grab tool or rotation tool, you can change the size of the influence of your deformation. Here we have a smaller influence. I can deform just the top of the head without deforming the mouth. All right, now you saw the different tools to use to animate your drawing. 
Now that we've messed up all the line art layer, we have to paint the color, so I'm going to do this manually. Remember, in the color layer, you must draw under each of the keyframes of the line art above. Also, you'll need to hide the other layers to make the bucket tool work properly. So now, with the same techniques, you can animate all the drawings on the box, on the side, on the front, use the sculpt tool, the pen, the edit tool, just have fun. Now the box is completely animated. You know how to edit the other grease pencil objects. Switch to object mode, show the other objects in the outliner, select one of them in the viewport, shift S, cursor to selected, switch to draw mode, set the canvas position to 3D cursor, choose the right orientation rule, and start to animate. Here we are in different grease pencil objects, so we can make different lengths for the loops. We have to add the modifier in the end with the correct loop range. Ok, we are going to duplicate these objects and make some variations. Just one thing, I'm going to draw another type of peel here floating on the front, because we have this lollipop and this little peel here, I just want to draw another one, like this. I complete the animation for this object and I add the loop modifier. Ok, it's done. And uh, the lollipop also, let's add some animation in this, so for this one I will just draw a little light reflection here on the top. And it's done. So we have all the 2D animations now, let's duplicate the objects. In object mode, you can select one of the grease pencil objects and then press Shift D to duplicate and move it to another place. You can even rotate it and make other copies. Now, when you play the animation, the duplicated objects look too similar, they have the same movements and same colors, so to change this, select one of these objects, go to the materials panel and select one of the colors in the list. Here you can change the color with the color picker here, but it's going to change for all the drawings, so to change the colors for just this object, click on the sphere icon near the color name here, and select another materials in the list to import. Of course you can also create a new color, but here I will import one of these colors. So now you've changed the color for just the object. So same technique for the other color here. Click on the sphere, select another color, and that's it. Now how to add variations to the animation. You can go to the modifiers panel and in the time of set modifier, this was the modifier we've added before for the loop, here you can change the frame of set value, and you see on the viewport, the object now has some delay in the animation. You can put a positive or negative value for the offset, just play the animation to see what's the best value for you. And now it seems to have a different animation than the other ones. Alright, let's do this for the other copy now, same technique, in the materials panel select the colors, import a different one for each, and then in the modifiers panel, in the time offset, change the frame offset. And that's it. Now let's add even more copies for our object, change the positions, the rotations, swap the colors, shift the offset values, and that's it, you know, all the 2D animation part. Let's see now how to add some 3D animation and export the video. Just two things to know if you're already a 3D animation expert. First, when you're in object mode, the grease pencil object is like any other object in Blender, so you can animate it like you usually do. And second thing, the little cubes that we placed here, you might want to set the juice box as their parent, like we did with the straw, so they will move together if you make complex animations. So if you already know how to do this, you can skip to the end of the video at the time code on screen here to see an extra animation that I've prepared for you and also to learn more about the contents I'm preparing. And for the beginners, let's see now how to animate the camera and add 3D motions. Let's go to the animation tab here. Be sure to be in object mode for all the 3D animation part. I will also change this viewport to render preview to see the background. Ok, now if you want to make complex animations for the juice box and not lose the cursor positions for the floating drawings in the front and side, you have to set the box as parent of the little cubes so that they move together if you just animate the parent object. So as we saw before for the straw, you can select the cubes in the outliner here and use shift or control for multiple selection 
and then drag the cubes over the juice box, hold shift and then release everything. And now the cubes are linked inside the juice box and you can see they are still in the collection at the bottom. So you can keep an object in a collection and link it to another object in another collection to animate them together. You can also do this in the viewport here. You can select the objects you want to set as children first, so the little boxes here and also the straw if you didn't like it before. And in the end, you add the parent to the selection by pressing shift click on the box for our case. And now if you press ctrl P and select set parent to object, now the last object that you've selected becomes the parent of the whole selection. So now if you move the box, the other objects move with it. Now how to animate this object? At the bottom you have the timeline again, but here it's for the 3D object, so it's empty for now. Of course all the panels in Blender are customizable, so if for some reason you want to edit your 2D animations in this window, you can go here and change this menu to Grease Pencil, and then you'll see your 2D keyframes, but for now we'll do the 3D part, so we will keep this panel to top sheet, that's for the 3D keyframes. And to create a first keyframe now, in object mode, select your object, place it where you want, and press I. Now you have a list of parameters. You can save the location, the rotation, the size, etc. In this case, I will pick location. So now the current location of the box is saved here at this exact time. If you open the object transforms below, you see all the keyframes that you've just created with the parameter name on the left, one keyframe for each of the X, Y and Z positions. Now to create now to create a loop, you can select these keyframes, just select the first dot at the top if you want, it selects everything, and then press Shift T to duplicate and drag to the end frame. So this is the range of the whole loop. Now you can go somewhere in the timeline like here for example, and then press G to move the box, and then press I, save the location, and a new keyframe is created here. If you want to loop this movement, you cannot use the modifiers inside the object like we did for the 2D animation before, because these modifiers are for the grease pencil part, so to create an automatic loop in your 3D animation, well, this is not actually the purpose of this tutorial, but I will show you briefly how to create a loop in 3D. Here, if you switch this panel to Graph Editor, and here, if you select one of the parameters that already has a keyframe, like the Z location here, for example, you can press N to open the side menu, and there you will find the modifiers for the 3D animation. This works only if you selected a parameter that was already animated and has keyframes. So in the list of modifiers, we can add the cycles modifier. This makes all your keyframes repeat automatically. It takes all the existing keyframes. So in our case, we have to delete the keyframe we've put at the end of the animation there. And with just these two keyframes now, we have an automatic loop. You can see it on the graph here. Well, I'm going to deactivate this modifier for now. I will show you how the keyframes work. So let's switch this panel back to top sheet and let's do the animation manually. For the loop, I just select the keyframes here and I duplicate the animation on the whole timeline with Shift T. And in the end, if I don't fall exactly on the last frame, I select all the keyframes and I resize them like we did before in the 2D animation. The keyframes make smooth animations per default. The objects accelerate and decelerate between the keyframes. So if you want to change that, you can select a keyframe and right click. And there you can change the interpolation mode for this keyframe. And the result is like the interpolations that we saw before in the 2D animation part. Now how to animate more than one property? Here we just animated the location of the box. Let's try to animate the location and rotation for another object. So I will select this lollipop here to do that. Here I press I, I save the location and I press I again and I save the rotation this time. So if you open the object transforms here, you see more keyframes in the list. And if you move in the timeline and then change the position and rotation of the lollipop, and then press I to create a keyframe. 
This time you can select available in the list. This will create the keyframes for all the parameters that you've already animated. This is a shortcut for not pressing I position and then I again and then rotation. But of course you can also decide to only save the position or only save the rotation here. So now you know how to animate the objects and for the camera, well, it's like any other object. In my case, I switch to top view with numpad 7 and I make a small movement and rotation like this from the top. And the view on the left helps me to see if the box is always in the center of the view. Okay, you can do this for all the objects in the scene now. And once the animation is finished, we can see how to export this as a video file. To render or to export the animation as a video file on your computer, go to the output properties, this printer icon here, and under the output section, select a file format. You can choose PNG or JPEG to create a file sequence, which means 240 images created in a folder, or you can choose one of the video formats here. If you plan to upload on social networks, the best format is FFmpeg video. And in the synchrony section, you can choose between these different codecs. And if you choose a format with transparent background, you'll have to disable the background color on the scene. And you can do that in the render properties in the camera icon here. And under the film section, check the transparent option. I will not activate it because I want to render my blue background. So back to output properties. Under the output section, you can click on this folder to choose the directory. Up there, you have the directory name, and at the bottom, you have the file name. And when everything is set, just go to render and render animation. So the whole animation will start to render in a pop up window, frame by frame. The image sequences will be saved progressively in your computer or at the end of a render if it's a video file. If your render takes too long, you can go back to render properties here. Check that the render engine is EV and try to decrease the sampling values. This will reduce the quality of the render, but for a non-realistic image like this grease pencil object, I've already put it down to 4. It didn't make a lot of difference. You, you will see the difference if you have a lot of light and shadow effects and other stuff. You can also just render one image and save it and compare the differences. So that's it for today, thanks for watching this tutorial till the end, I hope this will help you start your journey in the creation of mixed 2D and 3D animations. And thank you for your support, your donations on my TP page help me to dedicate more time to create videos for the whole community. I will try to post more short animated videos, some music videos also, and more animation tips for you. And you can also help me with just some feedbacks in the comment section. You can subscribe or add a like so that more people might see this tutorial. And now here's a little song that I've prepared with this free buddies here to thank you for your support while I was recording this video. And maybe you recognize your name in the end credits we are going to roll up behind. Anyway, thank you, stay safe and see you soon.